Welcome back everyone to Xamarin Dev Days Live. We're going into our last session before our hands-on lab where I'm going to bring Seth on board to uh, build out some apps live. I'm super excited about it. Uh, but we want to do something special for Dev Days Live. So I asked Brandon um, if he would come up and we had this big event, Connect, recently where oh, we yeah. made lots of announcements. I saw you on stage. Great job. I was on stage. I was very excited <laughs> about it. Got to show some cool apps which we're open sourcing soon. So check out blog.xamarin.com to learn about the bike sharing app which we're super excited about. There's a lot of other things. So there was a lot in Connect. And what we wanted to do is, is kind of summarize everything that happened at Connect for mobile developers, right? Because we have like SQL stuff and this stuff and all this crazy stuff going on in Visual Studio. But we want to take a few minutes to show some cool features. You know, now that we've walked through Xamarin, Xamarin Forms, uh, but walked through some of the cool new features, some new IDE stuff, kind of have a little discussion of it. We're taking Sounds questions. Good. So if you go to channel9.msdn.com, the main page underneath the video right now, you'll see some Q&A. And there's one up here about kind of um, setup of machines that I'll get into when we talk about the new <laughs> IDEs, I guess, which would be cool. That's always fun, right? Yeah. Uh, so Connect, uh, again, this is for mobile developers. We're going to kind of tackle it here. And first I want to talk about the IDE announcements. Um, I'm a longtime Visual Studio user, longtime Xamarin Studio user. And we actually just did our first RC of Visual Studio 2017, uh, which is super cool because we've uh, really focused on productivity, a lot of cool new Roslyn features, and you know, C Sharp 7 coming soon, uh, really streamlining for Azure development, which you just saw uh, with, yeah. So you want to, you know, it's really built also for the enterprise development at the same time. So already when you download VS 2017, we have Xamarin that's compatible. Um, it is a release candidate, uh, so kind of be aware of that. It's not on final. <laughs> but we also announced a brand new preview of Visual Studio for Mac, which That's is right. pretty cool. Now, you were using Xamarin Studio, Brandon. I was. Yeah. And what's really cool about this is kind of think of VS for Mac as the next evolution uh, of Xamarin Studio, right? So it has all the stuff that's built into Xamarin Studio today, but it's a whole brand new IDE kind of, you know, um, built for not only mobile development, but for cloud development. Uh, what I like about it is that you'll be able to do your iOS, Android, Mac development and .NET Core and ASP.NET Core right on a Mac. So same solution, same projects. Um, so we had a question come in and we want to tackle it while we're talking about the new IDEs is, you know, can you create, compile, run and emulate an app for every platform, desktop and mobile and Visual Studio for Mac on Mac OS? So it's a great question, right? So Mac, Visual Studio for Mac is going to do iOS, Android, Mac .NET Core, ASP.NET Core. For Windows development, it would be on a Windows machine yep. uh, in Visual Studio. So that's where your designers, everything like that. So you had a, your Xamarin Forms app. There was a UWP app in there, right? That's right. So, so that face-off app works in UWP. It does. For, so in our case for the demo, we were using Xamarin Studio. So if we brought that same solution, if we downloaded that on our PC, we can launch that in Visual Studio and run it right there on Windows. Yeah. So and there's other ways, obviously, to get Windows on a Mac. If you're using VMware Parallels, you could boot up Windows when you needed to do that work. But it's kind of up to you where you want to go. So <laughs> it's like if, when you're developing for a platform, like Mac OS development is on Mac because it's for Mac, right? So it's yep. there. Um, now, what's really cool about um, Visual Studio for Mac is that there's a free community edition. Uh, it's, not gonna, it's already included in your Visual Studio subscription, just like Xamarin Studio right. is. And it's available today as a preview. What's cool though is that you get these connected app templates, powerful refactoring, multi-process debugging, uh, TextMate bundles, and you can run it side by side Xamarin Studio today. So, big fan of it. Yeah, uh, been, super cool. Yeah, um, and I think though, like the IDEs are really cool, and there's a lot that you can do with them today. But I wanted to kind of talk through some of the other development tools. You know, Brandon and I, we really got to show like building the core apps, but there's so much more to development, right? That's so, right. So, you know, there's, I talked about Apple TV, I talked about Android Wear. You know, Xamarin's compatible with all of it, but we give really good tools. So, Brian, I'm going to let you kind of tackle some of the tools that we yeah, have. Yeah, it sounds good. Thanks, James. So, this first one is really, really cool. This is the Xamarin Inspector. So, imagine if you could change your UI in real time without having to recompile the app, without having to uh, really spend all that time building. Yeah. You can just do it, see it live. And the Xamarin Inspector allows you to do that. So it can show you the UI. It's a live REPL. So that stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop. Mm -hmm. So you can constantly make updates and tweaks and changes. 
And James, I don't know if you've ever seen Iron Man, but mm -hmm. one of my favorite movies. Because yep. I love it when, when Tony Stark is sitting down at his computer and he's got this exploded view of the Iron like, Man suit. Whoosh, 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 yeah, whoosh, moving stuff everywhere. That's what the inspector is. Check out how cool this looks. You can see your app in this exploded view and it shows you all the layers inside your app. Mm -hmm. and, and James, the, the reason this is so important is because every time you're, you have to add a new layer, that's a whole pass down the screen. Yeah. That's more CPU cycles, that's more information and memory. And if we can limit that, our app's gonna be that much more performant. It's gonna run that much faster, use less memory. And with the inspector, we can actually get a good view of how this all looks, because you know, maybe, maybe we missed something. Maybe yeah. We put a couple extra layers in there and we can, we can kind of peel back the onion and see what's really going on. Yeah, often for instance, like you were talking about, your, you have margin essentially, but sometimes developers will put like a bunch of stack layouts inside of each other, which are adding layer upon layer when really you could just, you know, put a little bit of padding or margin on a control. So the Xamarin Inspector will show you that and they actually have a special Xamarin Forms view so you actually see the Xamarin Forms controls. That's right. But I think the REPL is what really cool and you and I had a conversation yesterday that yeah, there is a view, but there's actually this REPL where you can talk to your app in real That's time. Right. Yeah, and so you can do crazy, crazy things with this. Yeah. Uh, for example, one of my friends, he has, he has a game. And in this game, it's, he's kind of flying a plane through um, and kind of shooting down enemies and they're shooting back at him. And so he pulled it up in with the Xamarin Inspector and he was able in real time to change values in yeah. the game. So he like exposed them publicly essentially, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's Very make cool. let's make the plane bigger. And yeah. then he got hit more by the enemy. So let's make the plane smaller. Really, really cool Very stuff. Cool. Yeah, I like the inspector a lot. And uh, <laughs> essentially it's kind of additional tools for for really improving and iterating on your app. And I think the the profiler also is that extra step. Oh right? yeah. So we we already talked about the inspector can show you the layers in your UI, make sure you're not uh, doing too much more than you need to. And so you get performance benefits there, but the profiler takes it to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. The profiler is going to show you where are your memory leaks? How much memory is your app using? Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're navigating through the app and then you, what we call pop its page off a navigation stack. So yeah. you go back. You're not using that old page anymore. Garbage collectors should come by, sweep it up. It should be gone. Yep. But is it? Yeah. And so yeah. what we can do is we can use the Xamarin profile, Profiler to make sure that our memory usage goes down and that's not logged in, lodged in memory somewhere mm -hmm. because there are, there's some gotchas in C Sharp. Yeah. You know, you might have an event handler still wired up to that page. Anything could happen. happen. Yeah. yeah, I had, uh, I had Nina, who is the, the program manager on the Xamarin show. So go back and watch that episode on the Xamarin Profiler. And she was kind of talking about cycles, which is that, you know, you have C Sharp code, but underneath iOS and Android, those are still native control so things could have this kind of circular weird thing and usually in C Sharp it's fine but it's kind of like the upside down, right? <laughs> uh, that's how she described it which is cool and that was great if you ever watch Stranger Things, I highly recommend. It's like the upside down <laughs> where there's literally a mirror of your application but the native side because again, Xamarin Forms are native and also a lot of developers are like, you know, worried about startup time. We had questions about Xamarin Forms performance and you know, you're loading a native traditional Xamarin app like I showed is 100% native performance and Xamarin Forms is a framework, right, on top of it. So there are some limitations. We try to get as buttery smooth as possible, but a lot of developers worry about startup time. And sometimes mm -hmm. it is the framework that's going to add a little bit of time, but sometimes we're doing a lot in our <laughs> app initialization where we shouldn't. Uh, and we can delay that and the, and the profiler will tell us with these memory snapshots. That's right. Cool. And the Xamarin Forms Previewer. So James, we were playing around with XAML earlier mm -hmm. when we were showing off Xamarin Forms. And one of the cool things with XAML is it doesn't need to be compiled to run. Yeah. You know, we do have the option in Xamarin Forms to use a XAML compiler, but we can actually preview XAML live in real time with the Xamarin Forms Previewer now. So what's really neat here is, again, we, we avoid the whole cycle of rebuilding the app, mm -hmm. deploying it to the phone okay, I didn't like how that looks. Let me go back and build it. Just like we did this morning. That, yeah. you know, five minutes, 10 minutes there, it really adds up over yeah, the development if, of an app. If you're developing this app for, you know, eight hours a day <laughs> every time you hit debug, and our Ooh. build times have been optimized, but if you have a huge, huge app, sometimes it's just nice to be like, boom, here's yeah, the Yeah, that's right. Preview. So now we have a window that you can open up in Visual Studio or Xamarin Studio. It'll show you what your XAML looks like in real time. So we have the sample here behind us. And what's cool with this is it's not just your XAML, but if you have 
some data behind that, mm. we're going to bring that in too. Yeah, so custom data binding. Yeah, let's say you have images, and we want to look at see how those images look. And now they're 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 square images, but let's make them a circle. We change that in the XAML, and we'll see that in real time. Really cool tool, really powerful. Yeah, and, and what's nice here is that um, like your bounce button, which is a custom button that you you created, right. will also do the custom rendering. It's pretty awesome. Uh, now, one thing I want to talk about, I'm going to give a quick demo. We're going to do some demos here too. Is Xamarin workbooks. A lot of developers come and they say, how do I get started with Xamarin? And I always say, hey, read a bunch of documentation. <laughs> we have samples. You know, Sometimes these samples are big. And that's how I got started five years ago is I, I went to developer.xamarin.com and did bump, 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 and went one, two, three. And I'll show you that in a second. But Xamarin workbooks work on, you, you'll have, notice this theme that everything works on Windows and on Mac. There's a profiler for Windows, <laughs> a native profiler for Mac. Oh, Xamarin workbooks native for, for PC and for Mac. And what we've done is we've created over 100 workbooks. There are live interactive documents. And I don't think you really quite get it until I show it to you. <laughs> so, and that's the thing. So, yeah, let's check this out. Yeah, let me show you this here. So, I'm going to go, when you go to Xamarin.com here, uh, you can tap on this. Uh, sorry, that's going to work. There we go. You can tap on the developer tab, right? So, we have lots of documents, you know, you know, learn about Xamarin University, Test Cloud. And when you tap on developers, this will take you to our documentation. A few things to point out. Xamarin University is live interactive training, which is awesome. You can get, become Xamarin certified. We have a completely free self-guided learning course right here. You can watch videos, do everything offline. It's great. You can learn about the Visual Studio for Mac preview. Here's the workbooks. I'll get to that in a second. I'm going to open in a new tab. But down here, again, this is my getting started. Getting started with Xamarin. You're having issues with setup, doing this stuff, iOS, Android, and Xamarin forms. I walk through the same thing five years ago, and I recommend it to this day. And, uh, and it doesn't matter, no matter what you're, work, you're working on, right? If you're working on Windows 10, which I am here, someone asks, can I do the hands-on lab? Of course you can. If you're on Mac, you're on Windows, whatever you're on, you're That's totally right. good. So Xamarin Workbooks, I tapped on this thing here. Now, this will bring you to our Xamarin Workbooks like uh, guide, essentially. How to download it, it's a separate install for Mac or Windows. So when you tap on that, it'll say, hey, you know, you need to have, you know, you install it on Mac or Windows. Here's what it works with and the different emulators that you have uh, in here. And there's like logs and you can give us feedback. What's cool is that these are all the workbooks. So here, if I want to get started with workbooks, how do they work? How do I visualize WPF or iOS? How do I use user interface controls on Android, for instance? Um, how do I use Azure, right? How do I get started with Azure or the emotion service, cognitive services? Or C Sharp 6, um, graphics, Urho Sharp, Tiny Render, Skia Sharp. Basically, you can learn anything interactively. So, for instance, I can download a W. Uh, where's a, a cool one that we did? Planet Earth. I'll download that and yeah, open it later. Cool I'll download it here. I've downloaded a few of them. So, I've downloaded the uh, Hello Android one. Let's learn about Android development. So, I actually have it running here on the, the desktop. So, all I did was I went over to my, um, my desktop and I ran Android, the, the Xamarin Workbooks. And essentially, what it did is it launched the Xamarin Workbooks app on my desktop. So here it is. And essentially, it's, it's like a readme file that I can execute code in. So check this out. <laughs> so here, for instance, it's like getting started. And it says, hey, you know, you want to get started. You want to go ahead and, and run these few commands. So you can hit start or you can hit control enter. And what this will do is it'll run and it'll execute the code. And it says, hey, you need to get the root activity. And this is kind of a way of exposing some variables. And it says, hey, here's this. We're good to go. I can define the user interface. So I start learning, like, what's a view group? What's an activity? Like, okay, well, I have this, uh, this linear layout that's vertical, and it's going to execute. And it says, hey, this is the last thing that you ran. Let's add a button, though. So I'm going to create a new button, pass it the activity, and I'm going to set the text here. So I'm learning about properties. I'm going to add it uh, to my view. So boom, I have a button. I executed code from a readme file, and it started a Xamarin Android app to learn from Incredible. this. Incredible. It's crazy. So then here I can say, oh, I want to add a text view here, which is cool. So there's there it is. this space to rent. I can change it, and it updates in real time. I can say, uh, I can come in and actually modify it. This is cool. <laughs> it's, it's a document, right? So hello, yeah. Xamarin Dev Days Live. Execute, execute. Come over, control enter. It updates in real time right there. So now I start learning about properties. So I want to maybe center it horizontally. That's pretty cool. I can come in and set padding options. There you go. I can set the room. I like it. I can set the color. Yellow. Eh. I don't like yellow, so I could. I love yellow. It's actually my favorite <laughs> color. But uh, we found something in here 
um, all the colors. Now notice I'm getting rich in Telesense. It's powered by Azure, or from Roslyn, I mean. So Roslyn's in here. My favorite was Burly, Burly Wood, uh, nice brown <laughs> color, right? You can say a blue, right? So you're getting these rich IntelliSense going on. That's really hard to see. Let's set it back to yellow. There we go. These are Android controls. Then you can learn about how do you respond, right? So I go through here and I say, yeah, how do I add a button click? All right, so now I've added a button click. So if I click it, it says the button was clicked. But again, I can come modify this code, right? So I can come in here and I can say, hey, what if I wanted to do a click handler that's in here? Let me go back down here and space it. I'll say var count equals zero. And then I'll come up here, maybe scroll down a little bit, and I'll say uh, count plus plus. Notice that I'll do some C sharp string interpolation, and I'll just go ahead and say count, and it, it knows how to do that. And then I'll control enter. And now, whenever I click, it adds the count That's on it. That's cool. Really cool. I can learn about displaying toast, I can learn about how to do all these different properties right inside of it, which is really cool. Uh, so I can go ahead and, and now open, and I'm done with this, and I have some further reading, some exercises. What's nice is that you don't have to go line by line either. So if I execute this Planet Earth one, which is a WPF application, it's going to relaunch a Xamarin workbook, and it's going to prepare it. Notice it's preparing the workbook on the bottom, and it has a bunch of like this thing called Erho Sharp, which is a really cool 3D uh, rendering framework, uh, which is really awesome. So it's going to prepare this workspace. Uh, and each one will take a little bit different. Essentially, in that instance, it'll try to connect to an Android emulator, or this instance, it's going to spin up a WPF application, which is right here. It's blank. So it's created that for us. Now I can start just executing this line by line if I want to, and uh, execute and bring, her in, bring in Erho Sharp and bring in all these using statements and, and do a bunch of other stuff. Now, actually, what's cool is it's actually downloading some packages here for me. So I'm going to go ahead and like, add some more things. Uh, add a bunch of nodes, do a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to go to the bottom and just run it because I think that's cool. I'm just going to go ahead and enter. And essentially now it's going to run through all of these lines of code all the way to the bottom. And right here, it actually just gave me this 3D map with a click handler where I can learn and I can try to click on these little um, things here. If I'm, I'm not doing a very good job. There, there we go. Is. I should use the touch screen because I have a touch screen. That's better. I can learn in how I have all these uh, things. I can modify this code. I can do all the different um, rotations and learn about how to use this 3D game engine, which is super awesome. And again, same thing here. If I click on the C Sharp 6 version, this is going to teach me all about C Sharp 6. When C Sharp 7 yeah. comes out, we'll do a C Sharp 7 one. This is so cool. So if you're like, hey man, how does null condition operate? How does the Elvis operator work, right? <laughs> I can come learn about how it was done in C Sharp 5, where I had to go in and check against null, where in this one I can use the question mark dot, right? So which is nice. so cool. Love it. So you can come learn in this. And this is just running in a console. So if I come in and I just execute the code, it'll go through and it'll actually execute the code up to that point. And I can actually see the results in line. So three, zero that are coming back right here. I can add click handlers. I can do all this stuff right inside of workbooks. It's completely free. No, no matter what you're doing, you just download it and you're good to go. Workbooks is super cool for learning. Uh, I love it. Um, we have one more thing. And you've been using quite a bit. I love um, it. <laughs> uh, I got to be on stage and kind of announce it, which is really cool with Nat. Yeah. Uh, which is awesome, which I ran in this morning, you know, too, actually, which is funny. Um, which is that when I, we're mobile developers, and this is kind of me on a day-to-day -day basis. I have my IDE, you know, there's Ameren Studio or Visual Studio, and I have my device that's plugged in, or I have a simulator. But then I start doing more, right? We, I saw UI tests in your project. Yep, got to test it. You have maybe crash reporting, maybe hockey app, or using um, some other services that are out there. Um, and then you want to do continuous integration. That's right. Um, you want to do a bunch of other stuff. So now we start adding all this stuff, right? You want to back-end services. Oh, yeah. Like uh, Azure, for instance, um, that are in there, and identity and all this stuff. And things get complicated uh, really fast, unfortunately. Uh, I've, I've published about 70 apps now on the different app stores. And, you know, the worst is, like, if I want Brandon here to actually test my application is I have to, like, build it, compile it, do this stuff, and then hand it to you and like email it right. to you, right? Make sure it's signed yeah. properly. Make sure I can yeah. install it. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and the problem here is that all these services are available, but I got to go find them all. <laughs> so, so what we did is we said, what if we put a bunch of those together? Boom. Right? Into one uh, service and rebuilt really everything for mobile first when it comes to continuous everything and the backend services I need for my app. And we call it Visual Studio Mobile Center, or what you'll call, uh, you'll hear me obviously say it's just Mobile Center. Uh, it's actually um, on, um, you'll see the URL, it's mobile.azure.com. But it's everything that you want, and we're adding more services all the time. Um, 
Yeah, that's right. So right now, this is this is hot off the presses. It's still um, preview, right? Still preview. Yeah. We actually just opened it up to the public. We when James announced this at Connect, this was actually a, a private preview. You had to request an invitation. We just opened that up. So if you just mm -hmm. go here to mobile.azure.com, you can create an account, log in, get started. Try it out. Let yeah. us know. Give us that feedback. That's what we'd love to hear, and we're going to use your feedback to make it even better. Yeah. And you've been automating an app with it and kind of want to show it off. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's, let's check it out. Let's head over. I'll, you can use my machine. <laughs> sure. Uh, no problem. I'll let you log into your account. So. Yeah. Are we in Chrome here? Yep. There we go. All right. So we have the Mobile Center tab open. And so right away, you can see I've, I've already got a bunch of apps in here. Like, yeah. like James said, I've been playing around with this a lot. And what I want to show you first is just how easy it is to get started with um, the big problem with CIs is just getting your app to build that first time. Yep. And I've used tools before, and it's taken me weeks, a whole week of just working on getting my app to build in CI. Uh, but check out how easy this is in Mobile Center. So I'm going to put the Face Off app in here. And the first thing you'll notice is this is Mobile Center. This isn't mm -hmm. just for Xamarin apps. Yeah, it's this not Xamarin Center. Yeah. Right? yeah. So if you have an iOS app built in Objective C or Swift, you can use Mobile Center. If you're a React Native developer, you can use Mobile Center. If if you have your Android app developed in Java, you can use Mobile Center. Yeah, it's we realize that. Listen, you may have not switched everything over to <laughs> Xamarin, and now you are after coming to Dev Days Live. That's right. Uh, soon, but you know, Mobile Center is for is that for everyone? Just like our tooling and everything, uh, we're very you know every developer, every app. You know, yeah, out there. But we're obviously going to show Xamarin because yeah. everyone should be developing with Xamarin. Yeah, so. we'll keep running with with the face off. So. Let's, uh, let's add that in here. We'll do Xamarin iOS. I'll say add new app. And the first page we're brought to is actually really nice. I'm so glad we did this because it actually gives you the code to add to your solution. So here you can see that. Thanks, James. Make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. So it tells you right here here's the NuGet packages to add, and then add these lines of code. And then you're done. You're, yeah. you're off and running. So there's no guessing. You don't have to dig through any documentation. Uh, it even puts my API key here. So that's fun, broadcasting live on the <laughs> internet. But uh, yeah, if we jump over to build, check out how easy this is. So, so essentially, there's kind of two parts, right? There's kind of like the continuous deployment and continuous integration part of it. That's right. And then there's also this back end, which is that getting started, which is that if you want crash reporting and analytics, you download an SDK. Before, just um, testing and automating your app and deploying it, you don't need to install anything. It's just whatever you need, but this is cool. But boom, face off. That's done. right. So yeah, let's, let's grab. So what I've already done, I've connected Mobile Center to my GitHub repo. And like we saw earlier, the face off app lives in GitHub. Mm -hmm. And so all I had to do was click on it, and it found these branches already for me. So here's the branch where we were working on the welcome page, yeah. and obviously my master branch. So let's grab, let's go into the master branch, set it up, and it has a couple questions. It's already scanned my repo for me, which is really cool. It found my solution file. So I'm just going to confirm that. That's good. I'm cool with debug for my configuration and Xcode using Xcode 8.1. And what we can do is we can tweak this a little bit. You can build for the simulator or you can build for actual devices. Okay, yeah. And so we won't do this today, but I could upload my provisioning profile, my certificate for signing, uh, signing stuff, identity. Yeah from my Apple developer account, and I can actually sign this in. After we've signed it, boom, I can distribute that to my beta tester. So just like James was saying, it's such a hassle to get your app into your beta tester's hands. And now Mobile Center makes it super easy. So let's just go ahead and toggle that off just to get this started. And as soon as I finish setup, it's off and running. So Mobile Center has continuous integration. And so now, anytime I commit to my master branch that I just configured, mm -hmm. Mobile Center is going to automatically build my app for me, make sure that there's no bugs, uh, make sure everything builds cleanly. Because you know, if we're on a big team with a bunch of developers and we're all contributing pull requests into the master branch, we want to make sure it works, right? Yeah. So let's make sure that the feature that James just wrote and I just wrote don't conflict. So what it's going to do now, it's actually building my app. Cool. I can click in here. We won't spend time looking at all the logs. Although we could. Yeah. So, so it's actually it's actually provisioned like a whole machine. This is built on top of VSTS, Visual Studio Team Services. So it's actually going off and it's provisioned a Mac somewhere in some magical cloud thingy that you don't have to yep. worry about. And it's building your iOS or Android application. 
Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's going to take a few minutes, yeah. I assume. So yeah. let, let's jump over, James, to uh, a sample app that I have in here. Here we go. So like we were saying, Mobile Center, this is your one-stop shop. Um, before, you could have CI, but you'd have to go to the, the CI portal to see your continuous integration results. And you could have UI tests run in the cloud and say Xamarin Test Cloud, yeah. but you'd have to go to Xamarin Test Cloud to see those test results. Yep. Same thing with distributing your app. You could do that with Hockey App, and then you could have analytics and crash reporting, and they're all in different places. So yep. now in Mobile Center, they're all in one spot. So let's, let's check out this in this sample app. So we already looked at build. So right away, we can see the build status for this app. Looks like I've got a, I've got a failing branch, maybe something to check on after Dev Days Live finishes up today. Mm -hmm. So let's go into the test results. So always, always test your apps, right? And so I like to have UI tests. And I uploaded these UI tests to Mobile Center. And just like you'd expect, I can come here and see my app running on all these real devices. These, yeah. are, these aren't simulators. These are real Physical Android devices. tablets, real yeah. Android phones. And so I can see just exactly how it looks. If I zoom in, we can even see the screenshots from the app as it was running on this device. So as I type in my username and my password, and then I can tap the login button and make sure that I get because I wanted to create a new user with an incorrect password for that one. Yeah, so basically ensuring that your app is doing what you're telling it to do. Yeah, and these are obviously great to make sure it passed, but even more helpful if it doesn't, because then yeah. we catch our bugs before we distribute it out to our beta testers. Absolutely. And that's actually the next tab here for distribute. I've got a team full of collaborator collaborators that's helped me uh, with this app. I can have multiple teams, so maybe I want to have a alpha testing team with, maybe it's just me and James, because yep. we're working on the app together, we'll test it out. We'll have a beta testing team where we can send it out to maybe people outside of the organization that can try it, give us the feedback. And we can do that automatically with Mobile Center. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and, and then you get some more services, right? So this is kind of, Adrian yeah. just showed kind of the back end with Azure Mobile Apps, but Mobile Center brings that into it, essentially, for this table here. So you can actually do everything that you showed you inside yeah. here, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, why go to Azure to create a table yeah. or to right edit, the data, edit, edit the data? I can see that all right here. So this is a table. This is the, the back end that this app uses. Oh, cool. And so I can see all the data that's in that table. Modify the schema. If I was feeling crazy. Yeah, yeah we, won't, we won't do that today. But yeah. yeah, you can interact with this just like you would in the Azure portal. And you can even include identity. Identity, yeah. So you don't have to. Login page. Yeah. So essentially, anything that you could do in the portal, like like Adrian was showing and setting up, it's right here. So you don't have to jump around even slow. We've we've even simplified that. That's right. Well, I think the last two are my favorite, though, crash and analytics, because once I've installed that SDK, there's a cross-platform API to actually add crash and analytics to my apps, see what my users are doing, so I yeah. can improve my app. So. And this is this is insanely helpful because mm -hmm. who knows what actually happens to your app when it's in the wild. Mm -hmm. So James and I have both pushed apps to app stores, and we think it works. We think we found all the bugs. Yeah. But who knows, right? Who knows? Maybe it's crashing on a certain device in, that we just didn't check. So this crash reporting will give us that data back. So if I'm running the app on my device as a user and it crashes, then the app will report back this stack trace. And so me as the developer, I can jump in here and say, OK, yeah, it looks like it crashed. In this case, it looks like there's a, there's a button called a crash button. Every time yep. you click it, it crashes. Go figure. <laughs> yep. Good way to test it. And yeah, like here's, here's the code. I can jump straight into that class and make sure I fix that bug. I like that. Yeah, and then analytics. I'm actually going to jump over to another app that has a little bit more data. Show off the analytics there. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, Check like this a, out. Yeah. Yeah, so my app, it's only been out for about a week or so. But you can see. After your app's been in the wild for months, weeks, days, you can start to see the trend analysis. You can see who's using my app, how are they using the app. And so you can even dig a little deeper. And actually, let's jump back to the sample we were looking at earlier and jump into events. events. Yeah. So event tracking, essentially, how often oh, things man. are appearing. Huge, often. huge. Yeah. So uh, this helps me as a developer understand what the users are doing. Are they tapping that button? Are they visiting this page? Yep. You know, we might have just spent a week adding a new feature to the app, 
are they actually using it? Yeah. Maybe we need to make that feature bigger. Maybe change a color. Maybe have a little splash welcome page that says, hey, check out this new feature. Know it's great. It. So when I want to make that next update to my app, I jump straight to the events and see what to do next. Boom. So there it is, kind of everything you need, continuous everything for your applications. I love it. Mobile.azure.com, check it out. Before we jump to a quick break and I get Seth in here, had a few questions about the labs, hands-on lab. We're going to put up the GitHub page one more time uh, at the beginning of the hands-on lab. Uh, and a few questions about what do I need to get set up? We sent out lots of email instructions. You can do it on Mac or PC, it's okay. If you're on a Mac, we're going to focus on iOS and Android development. If you're on a PC like Seth is, we're going to focus on Windows 10 and Android development. So don't worry about not having a Mac and a PC set up. That's what we're going to focus on today. So no matter what you're doing, if you're doing iOS and you're trying to do iOS from here and you have it, both of them, awesome. Try them all. Seth's going to be focused on Android and Windows 10, and we're going to walk through that setup right after the break. Thank you so all much. Right. Yeah, Thanks, everyone's loving it.